Hi, I'm Debbie from Vintage Food Farm. Today we're going to do a tour of just some of our tropical fruit trees. We're going to look at the fruit trees that were already established when we moved in on the block, um, which was really exciting for us because it meant that we had tropical fruit that we could eat that was grown right here on our own property. So let's go. So before we start, I'm just gonna show you, Tim is harvesting a pineapple with the hori hori. Nice, look at that. Beautiful, fresh, really ripe, tropical Queensland pineapple. Thanks, Tim. Anytime. So I'll show you some more pineapples in here. So these ones haven't got fruit on them. But, hello little chicken. Where's a pineapple with some fruit? Oh, here's one. There's one. There's another one. Another one in there. Another one. More there and more in there. So I will do a video on how to grow pineapples. Um, the beauty is that when you harvest a pineapple and eat it, you just cut the top off, pull off a few leaves, chuck it in a glass of water, and then you can plant that. So for every pineapple that you harvest, you can plant another pineapple. It's pretty cool. So the first tree that I want to show you is one that I have screwed up a million times. So I'll explain what happened. So this is a very huge, very productive, what I thought was a lychee tree because the leaves looked like lychee leaves and the previous guy that used to live here said to us that it was a lychee tree um, and that it had never fruited. Um, anyway, so about at the beginning of December, we got really, really excited because it hadn't fruited for so long, if at all, um, it started to come into bloom and then we started to get what we thought were small lychees on it. So I was taking photos and I was posting on social media and I was showing family and friends and I was so excited. And then I started to realize that the lychees weren't turning pink like the other lychees that I'd seen um, in the shops or at the market. So I'll just show you. So this is the fruit on the tree. So yesterday I was doing a little bit of filming around the block because I want to keep track of what's fruiting when um, and what it looks like so that we know when to harvest it next time because it's actually been a little bit difficult for us to know exactly when things are ready to harvest. And I posted a video of this amazing lychee tree on social media and my daughter said to me, uh, that's not a lychee tree, <laughs> that's a longan tree. And I was like, oh, okay. So I looked up longan and I'm pretty happy because I think we um, have had a win anyway. Um, so the fruit haven't developed properly yet. So there's a big seed, a little bit of flesh and a skin. I'll show you again. So you can see there's just a little bit of the flesh in there. That's the flesh, and then there's the seed and the skin. There are thousands and thousands of thousands of these longans. So the way that I find out what most fruit or vegetables or herbs are on this block is I do a Google lens search. So I take a photo and I go to the photo 
in my phone and I press Google Lens and it searches that image and tells you exactly what it was. And guess what? When I looked it up with the photo, it was a longan. So we have a very productive longan tree, which apparently originates in China um, and is very um, popular and prized. So I'm happy. <laughs> So the next tree I want to show you is our guava tree, which is probably more of a shrub, but it is so pretty. So that's the guava. You can see how many guava there are. It's just loaded with fruit. So beautiful, such luscious tropical leaves. Hundreds of fruit. So we got guava the first year that we were here and the truth is I was pretty disappointed in it. I had always had guava in like orange and guava juice or something and it had this really tropical flavour. So I kept waiting for the guava to get um, pink and soft and, and tropical but these I think are just a common guava. But when we went on holidays to Vietnam and we had... Um, you know, like a, uh, a smorgasbord type breakfast in the hotel, I noticed that this was, there was this like green crispy fruit every morning and it was really nice. It was green, it was crisp, it was a little bit tart, sort of like a cross between a Granny Smith apple and something else. And I found out that it was a guava and it was the same guava that we have here. So I'm now really excited to try it this year because I know that you don't need to leave it as long as I did. Because I left it too long, it almost sort of got into the overripe stage. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to eating them this year. More like a crunchy piece of fruit than a soft tropical piece of fruit. The other thing with the guava is that it self seeds. So there is probably 20 guava trees scattered just randomly all around the block all with hundreds of fruit. So I am really, really excited and hopeful that the chickens will eat them, um, which I think they will. Um, so we'll give that a go this year and I will let you know. So the next trees I'm gonna show you are our established mango trees. And these trees are Bowen mangoes or they are sometimes now called Kensington Pride. Um, it's one of the most old school common mangoes in far north Queensland and in the Northern Territory, um, even in central and northern um, Queensland. They are a very standard, very old school mango that most houses, if they had a mango tree, would have had. Um, these are fantastic because they're already fruiting, well some of them are still fruiting, um, but in the front of the block, which I'll show you in another video, we've planted a whole lot of really, really exciting um, mangoes such as my favorite mango which is the dragon's tooth mango but i'll show you that in another video so i'll show you now the bowen mangoes that have been here for years so these two chickens two ginger chickens are following me around everywhere as i'm doing this video hello what you doing what you doing what you doing they're getting all the bugs so these are the mango trees. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The, the original owners um, have cut down three of the mango trees. And when we moved in, they actually said that they thought they'd made a really big mistake and they'd cut them down too far. Um, but they did not make a mistake because it did take a good year for it to grow back. But because it's all new growth and the mangoes grow on the new growth, these three trees that have been cut down are actually doing really well. With heaps of fruit. Compared to the mango trees that are 
really outgrown so we're going to go through and cut the tops out of these mangoes as well it's going to look really ugly for a while um, but it'll be good for them and it'll give them a lot of new growth so i'll show you how overgrown it is so you can see how it's really getting a bit spindly and woody and it doesn't have that much new growth compared to this one so both the same age tree, both planted at the same time. One we get heaps of fruit of, and the other is just um, a, a real woody tree with not that much fruit. So we're gonna go along and we're going to cut those trees down as well, right down to about two meters from the ground so that they will look like stumps. And then we're gonna cross our fingers that they come back as well as what the other ones have. Because it's been raining, and it may possibly start to pour down any minute. It's now the wet season or the rainy season or the monsoon. I don't know if you can see it, but I am getting a little bit wet. Um, but because it's been raining, the, the chickens are just going out everywhere to get all the bugs that have come up um, because the ground is wet. Just as we're passing, I'll show you the remnants of our uh, campfire night the other night. So this was a huge roaring campfire which was so beautiful. You can see we all just sit around and we do need to tidy up I realise. Um, we just all sit around on, um, on the camp chairs and on the logs and we toast marshmallows and we have a drink and we look at the stars and it's absolutely beautiful. So this is one of the mangoes from the tree. You can see how beautiful the flesh is. These ones are all a little bit too green at the moment. This one did have a little rotten bit in it, that's why I cut it off first, but still absolutely beautiful, these Bowen mangoes. So I'll just leave the um, mango on the ground and the, um, the chickens will come and eat that. Only because it's got a bit of rotten in it, otherwise I would eat it, and I did taste it anyway. So I must point out also, whenever you go near a mango tree, you need to be really careful about green ants. Um, yeah, so it's not all beautiful tropical mangoes in Queensland. There are green ants on the mango trees as well, which bite and are really annoying. This is a passion fruit that we have got some passion fruit off. There's none on there at the moment because we ate them all. Um, we were going to leave this mango tree big like this and grow the passion fruit up it. Um, but we've decided to cut it back so that we can get more mangoes because we've got a heap more passion fruit growing up um, down the back. So I'll just show you what I was saying about the guava. So the guava is, you know, like 100 metres up the block, but this is a self-seeded guava that's just come up under this mango tree. So what I might do, I might dig that up and actually plant it somewhere else where it's not competing with the mango tree. And here, which we have heaps of, is um, in the back there, you can see the banana tree. There's also some of these beautiful tropical flowers in here. It's like, it's like being in the botanic garden sometimes. So all this stuff just pops up from the bush. I'm still being eaten by green ants. Um, so stunning, so beautiful. But yeah, that's a very healthy banana tree that's coming up. So you would expect that to put a flower out very soon. You can see the size of the canopy over it because the bananas really don't mind a little bit of shade. Actually, they can grow full shade or full sun. It doesn't matter, they just grow everywhere. I'll just show you. You can see the chickens up there munching on all the grubs after the rain. These two keep following me around, probably waiting for me to drop mangoes on the ground. So here you'll see another guava has come up, but this is what I want to show you. This is an elderberry tree. So you can make elderberry flower cordial, or you can just use elderberries and make elderberry cordial. Really, really yummy. 
This is our tiny little lychee tree. So when we thought the longan tree was a lychee tree, um, we asked about why, we asked around everywhere why it wasn't fruiting and they said to get another lychee tree so that of a different species so that they can cross pollinate and then the lychee tree would fruit. So we went and bought the very expensive small lychee tree to do that and then we found out um, that the lychee tree was already fruiting so we thought that we had wasted our money. But now that we know that we don't have a lychee tree, that we have a longan tree, it's pretty cool that we will have a lychee tree one day. So all's good. So this tree here is called Santol. So this was planted before we came here um, and it was just like a little stick in the ground. Um, and then over the last wet season until now, it's just gone up to like two meters tall. So very excited to try, which we've never tried before, Santol. So I just want to show you how it works on my phone. So I took a photo of this tree because I forgot what it was again. And Google Lens will tell me that it's a Santol tree. This next tree is one of the most productive trees that we have on the block. Um, besides the longans and the guavas and the calamansi, which I'll show you. But this is grapefruit. And we get truckloads of beautiful old school grapefruit off of here and we have done the two years that we have been here you can see how pretty they are it's such beautiful fruit and such a pretty tree there's something about citrus even though I know it's not just tropical but it just is so farmy and beautiful and productive so we make um, grapefruit cordial we have grapefruit soda um, the cockatoos um, the first year did drop a heap of the fruit so now we have our um, reflective owl with two beady eyes and so far so good we haven't had any cockatoo damage which is really good yeah beautiful beautiful really old really healthy grapefruit tree Tons of fruit everywhere. So pretty. These are some of our new Arancana chickens in here. Hiding and getting lots of bugs out of the leafy mulch under the trees. And over here are our two new Silver Sussex chickens. Hello. What you doing? What you doing? They are so pretty and so lovely. You good? You getting some bugs? Are you getting some bugs? Good. That's great. Enjoy. So this next tree is a calamansi tree. A lot of people in Australia confuse this with a kumquat tree, but it is definitely a calamansi and not a kumquat. So this tree is huge um, in the Philippines, um, in Vietnam. So in Vietnam, when you have, um, if you go to a, a, a tea house, and you have an iced tea, then they'll squeeze some calamansi juice into it. In the Philippines, they use it for everything. Um, there's always a bowl of calamansi on the side when you're eating your food. Um, and you can do a marinade with, um, with calamansi juice and soy sauce. When we have fresh prawns from our amazing local seafood um, supplier, we get soy sauce and calamansi juice and mix it up and have wasabi on the side and we dip the prawns into the calamansi and soy sauce and it is to die for. Um, it is sort of like a cross between 
an orange and a lime. I'll break one open and I'll show you. So, get that one. So they're green on the outside, but then they are orange on the inside and they are like a, a kumquat has hardly any juice. These have so much beautiful sweet and sour juice and all of these seeds will grow into new calamansi trees if you plant them up. Um, speaking to the old owner of the block and we're really lucky that we're in a small area where everybody knows everybody because they, um, it turned out that I happened to have worked with the best friend of the original owner. So the original owner came out and did a walk around the block with us and just told us a lot of the history, which when you're living in the big city, you don't, you don't get up here. Everybody knows everybody and it's really handy to learn um, the history of your block from the original owner that lived here for over 30 years. So that was pretty exciting. Um, but she thinks that they never planted a calamansi tree. And the reason that that probably happened is that um, calamansi was used for rootstock for other citrus. So um, back in the day, they probably planted an orange tree or a kumquat tree or um, a lemon tree, but it would have used a calamansi rootstock because we're in the tropics um, to stop the roots from, um, from rotting. So if at some stage the top of the tree died, but the rootstock took off, which is exactly what it looks like, huge tree, then we've ended up with this calamansi tree, which hardly anyone would have planted um, 20 or 30 years ago. So that's pretty exciting. Over here we have some more just little baby bananas. So we've planted these. I've planted these next to the chicken run so that I can just easily pull the leaves off and feed it to the chickens because the chickens love to eat um, banana stem, banana flowers, bananas, banana leaves. The only part of the banana they don't eat is the banana peel. So I don't know why, but they don't eat that. This next tree is what we call a bush lemon. Now this bush lemon has a very interesting backstory. So I've probably got about 20 of these bush lemons around the block. I know it's way too much. I know we'll never need them because I know that they are going to be a prolific fruiter as well. But it's such a gorgeous story. Um, and they were so easy to grow that I just got carried away. Um, but I had a friend that I worked with and she has a rural block further down the road. Um, and she has a big river going through her block. And she said, and she will not tell me where, it's a secret location, that there's an old Chinese gold panning site near her house. And nobody's ever discovered it much except for the people that live around it. And they're really trying to protect it. But on this little campsite where um, the old Chinese panners used to, used to live, um, there's still remnants of their herbs. Um, and their vegetables and these lemon trees, this bush lemon tree. So my friend picked a couple of lemons um, and she took them home and she ate them and they're bush lemons. So they're very sour, but they're really good. And the zest is amazing. Um, and she grew those lemons into lemon trees from the seeds from that original Chinese lemon tree by the river in far North Queensland, Australia. Um, and then when we were at work one day, she bought me in some lemons and said, but let me tell you the story about these lemons, um, which was amazing. And then I took the lemons home, I got some seeds, I grew some lemon trees, and I've planted them all over our block. So that's pretty cool. So I've shown you a couple of the baby bananas, and we've probably got um, about 10 um, small clusters of bananas all around the property that we've planted. But this one was the original one um, that was here when we came and we get so many bananas off this. I'll show you. So the chickens actually hang out under these bananas. Hello. Hello, Vanilla. What you doing? Hello, little ginger. So if you have a look up here, you can see we've got one bunch two bunches and then here 
um, if I can get to it. Up here, there's another massive banana flower coming out. I don't know if you can see it. Directly above us. Just up here. So that is going to be a magnificent bunch of bananas. And then if you saw our chicken coop tour, you'll know that once the bananas are ready to eat, we cut down the whole banana tree from the base, let it fall down, cut the bananas off. We take the bunch of bananas um, and we use them for smoothies and you name it, we eat bananas with everything. And then we actually just chop up um, the banana stem into pieces and the leaves And then we cut that up and we feed it to the chickens. So it's just such an amazing plant. Um, I think bananas are a herb, not a tree. But here they just grow so fast and they're so productive. Um, and the fact that we can eat from them. We also use these beautiful, beautiful lush banana leaves to wrap um, sticky rice in. We do damper. Um, damper wrapped in banana leaf and then put in the cast iron pan um, over a fire and just the flavour from the banana leaf permeates the damper and it's really really beautiful. We learnt that from a, an amazing lady on Thursday Island who, who makes the, the damper in the um, banana leaf. She's actually a relative of ours now, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we use banana leaves to wrap fish in and steam or wrap sticky rice in and steam. You can do sticky rice and pork, sticky rice and banana and wrap it up and steam it and it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, one of the most productive herbs, not trees, but they're still very big on the block. If you can hear a bit of banging in the background, I don't know if you can, that's our new neighbours moving in. It sounds like they've got a container full of furniture and they're doing it, all unpacking it. You'll see here at the bottom, all the new bananas, the pups that are growing up, we will either dig those up and plant them somewhere else or we'll just let this spread. But you'll see that we've had to put wire around it. and. Because the chickens will eat bananas, they will eat the pups first because they're obviously younger and tender and beautiful. Um, so yeah, we have to put a surround around them just until they get big enough. Um, and then um, we can take the surround off and move them to the next pups um, to protect them. So these two are plants that we have planted. We've actually planted four of these. These are coconut palms. So my son bought me some coconut palm seedlings, I suppose you would call them, from our local nursery, which has a lot of really, really amazing tropical plants in it, um, much more specialised and suited to what we have up here. And I'll just show you, oh, obviously we've also got all the pawpaws. So here's one of our pawpaws. Got some sort of native flies on top of it. Um, and then we also have the pawpaws in the vegetable garden. So that one over there is a massive pawpaw. And more pawpaws growing out of these garden beds. I would say we would have a hundred pawpaw trees planted in and around which are just starting to take off now and we have a lot of seeds that are popping up everywhere so that's really exciting. The chickens eat the pawpaw too so that's great. That's another mango tree that we planted, an avocado tree down there. And then one more, I'll do the rest of them because that's all really interesting stuff that we've planted uh, when we first moved in. So I will just show you this one more plant that we've only just planted just because it's in this area. Um, and that's a fig tree. So we actually bought this one from a nursery. 
which we don't normally do. We normally get them from just around the place, friends, neighbours, markets. So I absolutely love figs, so I'm very hopeful that we will get a lot of crop off of that. And it looks like it's really healthy so far, so that's fantastic. So that is it. That is the end of our tropical fruit tree tour here in far north Queensland, Australia. I'll just show you before we go. Tim is dragging a whole lot of branches out of the bush. We're going to chip those up with the chipper. What sort of chipper have we got? It's a Hansa C13. So it's a Hansa C13 and the reason I'm saying that is because it will chop up or chip really thick branches of hardwood like that and it will also do palms which is amazing so that brings to the end our video don't forget to like and subscribe but most importantly stay, stay calm, calm in, in the, the farm, farm.